Salutations, everyone, and welcome to another episode of. Um. What the fuck am I doing again? Meet the new family members of the team Tracer and uh, the Doctor with his kick ass guitar. Oh, yes! Yes, oh, I love this. Cheers, love, Cavity's here. Oh my god, I got two Brits. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's act the actor's actually a Scot. He's actually a Scot. She's British. <laughs> them all there, lined up together. Tracer is near Gogo, -Go, which is awesome. I love that. I love that. Right, so I haven't done a crappy news vlog in like a long time. Like I, like I haven't done it before. But you know. So uh, anyway, how's it going, everyone? I'm fine. I'm fine after that live stream. We don't talk about where. I went nutso and shit. <laughs> uh, anyway, hey, so today, hey, what's gonna happen and tomorrow and today? So we're gonna go and tell you about news today. So our president is now Donald Trump. So we got our first orange president. Call that Michelangelo. So we're gonna talk about how uh, things I've done today with that I saw yesterday on the weekend or whatever. I might do these on Monday because they seem like a Monday thing. The vlogs. <laughs> so let's talk about what's gonna happen tomorrow. Oh, first before I get to the weekend stuff. Tomorrow we're gonna be. Where? Fuck. <laughs> Tomorrow I'm going to go at. What am I doing? <laughs> Tomorrow oh, is, the, is the day that Suicide Squad comes out in digital uh, HD, and it's gonna be so awesome. Oh, I'm not promoting this. I'm not promoting this, everyone. I'm just excited that Suicide Squad is coming out in digital HD. It's too bad that the special features won't come alongside until the DVD and Blu-ray come out, which is fucking terrible. But that's not going to be the issue here. The, the issue is to wondering if the extended cut is going to be better than the theatrical cut. Fuck! So, <laughs> oh, I'm going to review the extended cut since I failed to review the theatrical cut. I will give my opinion about the theatrical cut in the review. I might do the review of it as video. Oh, whatever. <laughs> so anyway, what I want to talk about today is what came out on the weekend. And today, a more ghost in the shell talking. Huh. Talking, it's so awesome. Um, cue the music. The shell has released a new little small teaser trailers and also a full-length trailer and also this might be illegal but someone took their camera because I guess he this guy got an exclusive screening of seeing the movie I guess of Ghost in the Shell or just the intro of it and uh, we're gonna talk about that we're gonna talk about the little small trailer and we're gonna talk about the huge trailer and then we're gonna talk about the scene anyway let's go to the anyway Let's get to the, the small scene. So the small scene is trailer, which shows to which shows Major Kusanagi uh, in the iconic scene where this guy was uh, this kill this dude this bad guy robot that got the ghost that got brainwashed from shut up the guy who got brainwashed from his from his programming that like, Matoko's chasing. Ing Fu, shut up, phones. God, everyone's phones going off. <laughs> uh, the chasing. If you ever watched the movie, then you will remember the scene where Tomoko chases him, and then he goes to the water, and then she is in her camouflage, and then she kicks him in this cool kung fu jitsu something. <laughs> like, 
Jitsu uh, shed that to him in camouflage mode. She was also naked. Very naked. In that. <laughs> However, in this recreation of the scene, she's not naked at all in this. It's not a problem, but I'm kind of disappointed. <laughs> You think I'm a pervert for saying that, right? Which I kind of am. But <laughs> it's kind of disappointing. If you want to go full on Ghost in a Shell, where they just made her completely, like, fully look human, and then, like, oh, she's naked. <laughs> Boobs are out. <laughs> but no, it's kind of like a suit or something. Like, she's not fully human. Like, only her structural system thing is there. Where you could see her cybernetic skeleton or something. Only her arms and legs, I guess, and her head <laughs> are the only thing that looks human. Under those clothes, it's uh, not. <laughs> it's not. It's just robot. <laughs> it's just fucking robot. <laughs> not that I would say that we want to see Skeletor Hudson naked. Though I kind of did. In under under the skin, which is a good movie by the way, it's a great movie. Uh, <laughs> under the skin, where she uh, did her th all those things. It was a trippy movie. <laughs> it was a pretty good scene. I kind I liked it. It was fun seeing it. It was just small, just minor, nothing wrong. Just this director showing us that he can freaking direct this movie, which is good. I'm glad he's directing it. I'm glad he's doing it, despite. Hearing how a scumbag he is for cheating on his wife with Christian Stewart in the Snow and the Huntsman. It's it's pretty good for visual wise when I see it. when you see small bits of the trailer you get sort of these little practical visuals. I haven't seen much of the CGI yet, but now they showed the CGI now. They show the CGI now of how impressive it looks. Nice. Mm. Now for the trailer. Doesn't give that much away. Nothing spoiled. I was scared they were gonna reveal what the laughing man looked like, but thank god they didn't. <laughs> it, it was just him, I think. It was just him all like in this like dark corner. He's all blacked out. He's like, can't see me <laughs> except for my long flowing blonde hair. <laughs> And then we see, we get to see, oh, we get to see uh, the major, major, major Matoko Kuzanagi, and he talk about how she feels about being uh, what she is, like where she was made, like a ghost in a shell. Get it? Cause I guess, cause if I remember correctly, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. I've seen the movies. I try to interpret them. I guess she was a human at one point, and the only thing human about her is her ghost, and it'll, well, ghost, and that's it. <laughs> Nothing else human about her. Just being her ghost is the only thing human about her. I don't know, I guess. I don't know how she became a, a ghost. That I'm just think, I, I'm trying to think, how did she die? And then said, okay, your ghost is going to be inside this robotic synthetic suit. And then you're gonna be a robot, but your ghost makes you human and whatever. <laughs> your emotions will be killed to shit. <laughs> but not Bato. Bato seems really human with his personality. He really does. <laughs> the trailer looks amazing. The visuals, I love it. Seeing Tokyo in, in this really great futuristic setting. It looks so good. It looks gorgeous. It looks beautiful. Its atmosphere is dark, pretty. I love it. It's going with neo-noir kind of like a style like that. Like with, uh, like I love. It, I love noir like style of it. Because okay. I'm thinking this movie is going to be like an action, but not just action, but mystery also. Because it's more like that with mystery and and little subtle things of Ghost in a Shell that's more psychological in a point. <laughs> to make you think is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I don't think all of them like seeing my ass or not. <laughs> uh, but anyways... <laughs>
these people. <laughs> well, it's really interesting. I love the trailer. It was interesting. I seeing Scarlett Johansson play the major is cool. I love her. Just even seeing her work off. Even seeing all the things, like all the act, just the characters. I was hesitant to see all the creepy shit. Like, the post-production value of the costumes look like shit to me. Bato look like shit to me. Cause like, he's like, he's got eyes. He's got fucking eyes. I'm like, Bato only has those fucking, what, those little cylinder things. Those small cylinder, like, robotic fucking eyes on it. On a human head, but when you see the movie, it's better. <laughs> it's fucking better. I just saw. I was like, "Yeah, Bato, that is Bato right there." Yeah, and you see, then you see a uh, Bita Keshi, and you're like, "Yeah, Bita Keshi, like shooting this dude in the street." I don't know who he's shooting at, but he's fucking pissed, just unloading the bullets out. <laughs> it's just, like it was so cool. Even this, like, it looked like Blade Runner. Like, have you guys seen Blade Runner? Look up a trailer of Blade Runner, then look at the trailer of the Ghost in the Shell, and you'll know what I'm talking about. Tokyo looks like Blade Runner. The whole, like, the visual ads that have, like, um, the visual ads that, um, that are, like, holograms and everything, but I can't say that Blade Runner, uh, was the first to do that. I could say that Akira has done that. Akira might have done that first, because they had the hologram, like, ads and everything. All around the town, there was like those ads that there were holograms, these huge ass ads in Tokyo, and it was so cool looking at them. It was like watching Blade Runner, <laughs> which I think this was the inspiration for this movie to go by is Blade Runner. You know? Is that a new Blade Runner is coming up next year also? So I wonder what's gonna be the best sci-fi movie ever. It's either gonna be Ghost in a Shell or freaking Blade Runner. My money's on possibly Ghost in Shell, but in all honesty, the one that I think is going to make more money is Blade Runner because people back then loved Blade Runner and they had like so many director's cuts and shit there. I don't think Harrison Ford's coming back at all, but saying, hey, let's make a sequel to Blade Runner years later. <laughs> That's like making a sequel to fucking Minority Report and then Oh wait, they did that. It was a fucking TV series on Fox. Got cancelled. One season. <laughs> if they keep the, everything the right way, like like small little clips of scenes from the movie, like, oh, here's a robotic geisha walking through the hallway. You don't know what she's planning. Although, if you ever watch Stand Alone Complex, you know what's gonna happen. <laughs> First episode of Stand Alone Complex, by the way. A geisha scene. Geishas go fucking crazy. <laughs> In a sense, it was, uh... It was, what? Like, real-life dolls? Robotic dolls that can actually have physical sexual interactions with you? <laughs> to humans? <laughs> That's what I remember from Innocence. Innocence is a pretty good sequel to Ghost in the Shell. Not... I mean, it doesn't show my favorite character, Kusanagi, but it shows my other favorite character, Bato, in Innocence, and you see more from him. I mean, despite all the crappy CGI from that movie that I don't like, the visual of the CGI sometimes, and the visual and the trippy scenes in that movie were pretty good. I like that. I liked Innocence. People don't like Innocence. I like Innocence. I think my opinion of Innocence in my review page is different. But I think I've grown to like it after watching it a second time. Pretty much, I need Innocence again. I gotta get that movie again. I love Ghost in Shell Innocence. That's, I love all the movies in general. <laughs> the other characters, I guess, like Togusa. We haven't seen Togusa. I didn't see Togusa yet. But if Togusa was in a trailer, let me know. I didn't, I didn't see Togusa. <laughs> I'm wondering. I like Togusa also. Um, okay, and now for the scene that was filmed illegally in a theater that this guy was like, <laughs> Oh man, visuals, I can't handle. <laughs> Let's try it again. Like, Oh man, visuals, I can't handle it. Oh shit. <laughs> 
So anyway, this was posted on a channel. I don't know what channel it was. I just saw, oh, first look scene of the intro of Ghost in a Shell. And then I completely lost it because uh, <laughs> they played the song from the first movie. They played the song. I was so freaking shocked. They played the song. But it wasn't like, oh, we took the song, the track of the song from the original soundtrack. No. They got a fucking, like, composer. I don't know who composed the film. But this guy, like, I think the director looked at this composer, like this, um, the guy who's composing the music, the freaking composer of the film, he told him, okay, I need you to watch the movie, and I also need you to uh, listen to the soundtrack of the movie, of the Ghost in the Shell film, and I need you to mimic the songs in the film, but revamp them more, like, make them more edge, like, like that's what they were doing, like, they were trying to put these, this, they try trying to make a more higher class, like, a more remastered version of the song. I forgot the name of the song. Making of Cyborg. That's the name of the song. That's the name. Making of Cyborg. I didn't totally just look at my phone and go, go to my music playlist and look up Ghost in a Shell music soundtrack. <laughs> I actually do have the soundtrack. I actually do have the soundtrack of the, um, of the, uh, <laughs> of it on my phone. <laughs> So yeah, they made a revamped version of Making of Cyborg, and it was so cool. Even, I think they got new core, a new core choir to go in like, <laughs> Play it near because I can't do it. But they sound similar to the ones in the freaking movie. I'm like, what? That can't be the same ones. That's like, in nine, that's like, this movie was like made in what, 1995 or something? Same year as uh, GoldenEye? <laughs> I, it can't be, like, it was so cool. And you see like, Matoka Kuzunagi, like, getting made in the, in the, in the thing, where, in the machine, and so you see, but you see all of them, like, the construction of it, and, like, the cyborg head, and then you show them, like, we're gonna put her body in there, and our ghost is there, and then they put her in the body, and it was so cool. It was so cool seeing the process of her, of her being made, but in live action, in this great, fantastic-looking CGI. I love it. It was so good. It was great. I thought it was gonna go full on. Like, we're gonna have her wake up in her bed. Like, she dreamed about that. And then she has the plugs in the back of her head and she pulls it out. Oh! God! Yes! I'm so too excited of this. I haven't been this excited. This is a. People are saying that this has to be the first ever. This, these, this has to be the first ever best. The first ever Hollywood's best animated film, anime film ever. Like, is this gonna be a good anime adaptation? And I think it will be, both critically and uh, commercial, commercially and critically, and also box office pop up uh, tops. Totally, it has to be. It has to be. It fucking has to be. <laughs> Cause frankly. Hey, everything about it is like the first like people see this is gonna be the first ever good anime film adaptation ever. Despite after what I said in Eternal Banter, I thought that Speed Racer is a great anime film. <laughs> because it actually got the characters down, got the look down, got everything down about it, that Speed Racer only jacked up on the Wachowskis like steroids and then like yes, we we're making an awesome Epic of race car driving. <laughs> I still like that movie. I don't care what people say. I like that movie, including Astro Boy. Yes, I liked Astro Boy. <laughs> it may not be good, but Astro Boy actually 
follows a story better than the 80s one where focus more on the father talking about he wants his son back and then if that he doesn't get that and then he go and then he said about that like you're not my son and <laughs> I'm Nichols Cage and I thought it was pretty good about that I mean about the father talking about his son and then accepting like you know he is my son just as a robot <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's good. It's just that the story needed more work and the animation was. And I bet that was a company. What was it called? Imagey. What? Imagey Entertainment? I think that was their only fucking animated film, Astro Boy. Like, they sank their entire fundings on this movie. <laughs> and they're like, shit. Well, Astro Boy didn't do good. In all honesty, Astro Boy is the highest rated. It really is the highest rated uh, anime Hollywood film adaptation. I'm not kidding. Like, it's got what forty nine percent. Yeah, Speed Racer is like what thirty something. Dragon Ball Evolution is like what ten percent or some shit. Really, ten percent? What was the other? 10% of critics says this is, a, is that this is a good awesome movie. I think I, I like it for the animals and the mangoes, you know, I thought it was pretty good. And no! Serious no, no, no. What ten percent said I like this? Who? Generic fucking white boy that looks like Goku and he's like it's like I'm totally Goku. See my Saiyan hair that's totally sticking up but can't totally stick up like anime hair. They couldn't afford a wig. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Evolution sucked. Even if I wasn't a big Dragon Ball Z fan, Dragon Ball fan, <laughs> Dragon Ball fan, I knew that wasn't Dragon Ball. And it was bullshit. Piccolo sucked. <laughs> like this was Super Saiyan and this white boy. Ah, fuck you. <laughs> there wasn't Goku little like a kid, you know. Got monkey tail, just a little small. Met Bulma who wanted to get what a fucking boyfriend or something to have the Dragon Balls and shit and. Am I right? <laughs> Am I right? Because there are tons of variations of Dragon Ball. I don't know which one I watched. <laughs> uh, just, or was it Endless Supply of Strawberries? I don't know. <laughs> oh, strawberries, bitch. <laughs> Seriously. They tried to remake a story. All around shit. <laughs> Brian Tyler did the music for Dragon Ball Evolution. Shit. Man. This is a shit. <laughs> Dragon Ball Evolution is the worst one. You can complain about Speed Racer being bad, but for God's sakes, people, at least Speed Racer had directors. Directors who were the, also the writers that grew up with the show and actually want to put their heart and soul into this movie. And the Wachowskis fucking succeeded into making it a Speed Racer movie because they knew what Speed Racer was. Dragon Ball Evolution didn't do jack shit. They just like, they just went up and they're like, all right, men, we're gonna go and make a Dragon Ball movie. I don't know shit about it, but I'm gonna do it. That's like Shaman when he did Last Airbender. He didn't do jack shit about it. Nickelodeon just threw shit at him, like clips and pictures of it. And Shyamalan's like, yeah, I know what to do with this. But let me put my spin to it. <laughs> Call Aang Ong, you fucking twat. It, it, it's Aang! Ong! What's wrong with you? <laughs> God! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> I went off track there. <laughs> I went off track. <laughs> so people are still complaining about whitewashing despite the director, both directors, the director of Ghost in a Shell movie and the Ghost in a Shell movies and the director of Standalone Complex do give their approval. They were on the sets, I think, I remember correctly. They were on the sets. Someone told me this. They were on the set, and uh, they were, like, looking at the movie, and they were impressed with it. They loved it. They actually liked it. They came by there. I don't know if this movie was actually filmed in Japan, but if it was, cool. Uh, <laughs> film and location. Don't fuck up. <laughs> don't be fucking... Uh, I don't know. The director of Dragon Ball Evolution, which I don't fucking know who directed it. All I know is it was an Asian. He was Asian. Asian guy. Totally. I'm not kidding. I don't know. Maybe. I think it was the director of The Ring. Actually, let me check. <laughs> So I found out the director is James Wong. He directed uh, and wrote some of the Final Destination movies. And he also did a movie I like with Jet Li and Jason Statham called The One. And the One. If you don't know what The One is, The One is about Jet Li who uh, goes through like timelines where he has to go and kill all his... Uh, his alternate di alternate timeline counterparts so he can only be one Jet Li <laughs> which is a pretty good movie I love I, I like it it was pretty cool oh let the bodies hit the floor let the bodies hit the floor <laughs> <laughs> that song was in the movie and also uh, what was that Ooh -ah! <laughs> Ooh -ah! or something I don't I can't do it Ooh -ah! <laughs> I can't do it your voice hurts from yelling about Shyamalan fucking up Last Airbender. So James Wong has done good movies, I think. Final Destination, do I consider them good movies? I consider them interesting. <laughs> Especially Final Destination 2 with the Rube Goldberg devices of killing people. <laughs> Most interesting ways to die. Also Candyman was that black guy who appeared in all those Final Destination movies. <laughs> Which is shocking, I didn't know it was him until now. <laughs> Don't blame the director, blame the writers, I guess is the moral of the story, but maybe James Wong wrote the movie. <laughs> so anyway people, that's it for uh, Nero's crappy vlogs. I don't know how I'm gonna edit this. Yeah. This. But, uh, today I think it was a great day to end it right here and, uh, and, and do shit, you know. Let me know, uh, and let me know what your opinions are on the new Ghost of Shell movie and tell me what you thought about the recreation of the intro of the first movie. Movie. I want to hear your opinions about that. Yeah. Especially you tell them. Look at you. Tell them. For the camera. You haven't done an internal banter for so long, man. We need to come together as one! United! <laughs> anyway, I'm that's it for me. I'm Nir Bikoshi. Leave a like and subscribe if you want to, whatever. I don't care. If, uh, as long as you're watching them, I'm happy. <laughs> I, I want, as long as I can feel happy that someone's watching them. Anyway, hey, see you guys in the next video. Ciao! <laughs>
All right. You might want to hurry. I heard dog guys are sending reinforcements. You should probably be gone. You saw Rin being chased by Daishi Hong monkeys? What the hell's that about? Hey, That's what we 